The Music is Life podcast has our own merch now over on tpublic.com. Click the link below in the video description. Looking for some new threads? We got t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, crew neck sweatshirts, tank tops, baseball tees, and also clothes for kids and onesies for your little infant metalheads. Don't want clothes but love the Java? We got you covered with coffee mugs and travel mugs. Need protection for your electronics? We've also got phone and laptop cases. We've got everything you're looking for at the tpublic.com Music is Life podcast store. Use my link below for fast service. Thanks for your support. TerraNut is proud to offer you a natural nut bar chock full of healthy fats, minerals, and protein that meet your demands. Go to their website, www.terranut.com. You can order from them directly and they will ship it to you. Use my coupon code LUMAVS and you will get a 25% discount on your first order. TerraNut Superfood Snacks, www.terranut.com. Don't forget to use coupon code LUMAVS at checkout. Fuel your life. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Ratsaw Review Network. Ratsaw Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including the flagship show, Ratsaw Review, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Ratsaw Review spin-off, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past, and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's Music, the Right Opinion with Harrison Bergeron. Beyond Bushido, a podcast dedicated to pro wrestling and MMA with James Lilquist and Eric Adams. No relation to the guy from Manowar or the mayor of New York City. The Vieira Ball with Ralph Vieira. Schmackamagab! Schmackamagab to you too, Ralph. The Team Otoki podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon founding member Team Otoki. The BS Sessions with Mark and Jerry. Just the Cheese, Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam. The Friday Night Party with the great Harry Barnett and Evie. And the Music is Live podcast with Lou Mavs. The Ratsaw Review Network is your go-to, one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsawReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsaw Review Network. We're taking over. Ladies and gentlemen, how do? We are ready and waiting for you now. If it's a fight that you just see, we've acquired our strength through pain. No more are we pathetic game. You are the reason why we claim that we've all become this way. And I regret this prison that I created for myself Who can it be? Who makes us cry? Who won't save us from ourselves? I close my eyes and then I pray That revenge can be as sweet as it sounds We are the rebels that fall from me Music is Live Podcast. This is your host, Lou Mavs. Check out everything you need to know about the show over at musicislivepodcast.com. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to music, I don't care if it comes with a one minute package or a 20 minute package or who's singing it. All I know is I'm a fan of what I consider good music. And my guest tonight is no exception. From the heart of Hollywood, Canada, and Europe, Hollywood Apocalypse is a modernized version of Hollywood's Sunset Strip sound in the 1980s with an additional punk rock drive. And it's considered an amalgamation of sonic joy influenced by bands as varied as Guns N' Roses and Green Day. Fronted by Princess Ivan, Hollywood Apocalypse shows great strength in lyrics that couldn't be more pure, personal, and authentic. 
The first single, Baby, is a destructive indie rock anthem serenading love and murder in the golden age of Hollywood. While the second single, Rain in L.A., compares a dysfunctional relationship to L.A.'s crazy weather. The power ballad, Dreaming of You, is a gorgeous song that combines 70s AM pop hooks with 90s alternative edge. Check out their new single, Green Tea and Other Recreational Drugs, when you have a chance. It's my favorite one so far. Ladies and gentlemen, and all points in between, please welcome my special guest from Hollywood Apocalypse, Princess Ivan. Hi, guys. How you doing? Oh, my God. You saying all that made me blush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I have that effect on people. What can I say? <laughs> Ivan, thank you so much for joining me tonight. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm really excited. Like you caught me in a wonderful position. Like I'm just like with the boys producing, uh, making the new record. We're doing album number two, even though album number one isn't even officially out yet. I'm like putting out every track, it out track by track until every single single is out. Then we put it out as a compilation and we're already working on two. And like this one is going to be the catchiest of them all. Like, Every song is just so fucking catchy. It's like the real pop punk right there. Very cool. And you got Josh Randy from Mob Records helping you out on this record, yes, correct? Of course I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's doing like he just played all these bass lines in one day. It was crazy. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear it. I love what I heard so far and definitely looking forward to what's coming up next. Normally, the first question I ask all my guests is what was it that got them interested in music in their formative years? So I'd like to pose the question to you right now. I don't think there was a time I did not care about music. My mom always tells me is that I used to be singing before I even started talking. As a kid, I'd be doing these melodies but before I could even speak proper words. So I don't really think there was a time when I wasn't like really focused on the music. I remember when I was like... I don't remember, but like I, I'm told that like when I was like three or four years old, my sister would be watching some movies on TV and stuff that we had on VHS. And I'd as a kid be like asking her, can you put the movie on that had that and that melody and so on and so on. I always enjoyed good old hard rock bands like Guns N' Roses and Nirvana back in the day. But I was also really big on really old school doo-wop stuff. Like I think doo-wop is kind of like the basis of like everything we do. I agree with that statement like all like the la motown stuff like back in the 40s and 50s a lot of doo-wop comes from la which is kind of crazy i always thought it was from like new york and stuff but there's a lot we had we had happening here la before detroit i don't know we'd have to check on that but i we have like, no I time was, for fact checking right now <laughs> i'm just discovering that la has a huge history of like doo about music and i did not know that <laughs> that's cool though that's something to look into so from the doo-wop and the musicals and the love for hard rock that made you want to pursue songwriting yeah pretty much i was always like big on writing melodies and lyrics and at some point like i started like writing lyrics like a maniac when i was like 11 years old and then i kind kind of like got the drift that not everyone can figure out the melody that I want in like the lyrics that I'm writing. So like when I was 16, I started, I picked up a guitar and kind of taught myself how to like play some chords. Like I was listening to this German punk band and they're really good. They're so underrated. Like everybody checking this out. Like I really recommend you, you guys should check out the Bates. That is an awesome band. I really taught myself how to play the guitar, but listening to their stuff, it's all very simple. And it's just like, basic chords and power chords too. Streets are full of trash Talking about the dream I'll cheer again Everybody's going quiet and tame Streets are full of crap And it's all like very melodic and they just got way too little credit and it's kind of sad and the lead singer Zimbo he passed away in 2000 from kind of drinking too much booze back in the day it was like he didn't start a show without a bottle of vodka and then he'd kill the second bottle of vodka while he was playing that show it was crazy that's so, insane and they're called the baits you said yeah the baits i'll have to check that out thanks for the recommendation were you born and raised in california no 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 for me it was like this huge battle of like it all to like come to california like i grew up all over the place i was born in croatia 
And then I spent like my kindergarten days in Germany. And then I moved to Canada for like eight years or so. That's a while. That's how I picked up on my English. And then I moved back to Germany and it was like a big chunk of my life there, like about like 15 years at least, like 15, 20 years. Yeah, it was like that time when it was like early 90s. That's when like I discovered like Guns N' Roses, like Use Your Illusions was like the big ass shit for me. Most Guns N' Roses people will tell you it's all about appetite for destruction. But I was like really one of those use your illusions kids. Like the, those those songs, Live and Let Die, Don't Cry. Like that double album, like it really did a number on, on me. I also got into the other old school shit like Aerosmith and Motley Crue and all the Sunset bands back in the day. And I was like, even like back then in 1992, I was like, one day I want to be there. I want to be in follow playing on the sunset. I want to be in, on Hollywood. And I'm kind of proud. I think my 11 year old self would be pretty proud of me that I actually made it out here. I'm doing all this shit. So it's kind of crazy. Like when you put your mind to things, you can really like make anything happen. That's what I like. I really feel especially like coming out here. My 11 year old self would be very happy. <laughs> No, hey, that's a huge accomplishment from the sounds of it. It's like how many people already know what they want to do when they're that young. And then once they reach an age of maturity or cognizance, it's like they could say they're actually pursuing it if they're not doing it. So that's wonderful. Congratulations on that. Your music definitely has a California vibe about it. I couldn't help but notice a little danger and swagger in your music as well, which kind of reminds me of 70s. New York City punk rock. You know, I definitely hear a little New York Dolls and Blondie in there too. And I mean that with the highest compliment. Was there ever an interest at all in this era or scene? Oh, definitely, definitely. Like New York Dolls and Blondie is definitely up in there. I was like always like Sex Pistols like were always one of my favorites. Same with like the Ramones. Basically the whole entire New York CBGB scene back in the day. I thought that was like awesome. Punk really grew on me the most, I, I, even though, don't, don't get me wrong, I love 70s punk rock, but 80s and 90s punk rock is where like really like got to me. Like that religion, no effects, the offspring, oh, all yeah. those bands, like those were the ones that really like rancid. That's the stuff that like really got me into punk. But that was like a flair. Like I totally loved the whole entire 70s punk rock scene, just like as you mentioned, the CBGB's bands back in the day. How has it been right now in terms of performing? or even touring right now, especially in California, have COVID restrictions kind of placed a hold on you or has it restricted your performances? I had kind of problems, like even like getting back into the country back during the COVID days. So when I got here, uh, got back here after like being gone for a while, it was a bit tough, like getting gigs, but there were always these little places that opened up. It's kind of weird. When I got here, most of Sunset, there was there were hardly any shows on Sunset at all. But there's this was this little place near Universal Studios called the Universal Barn Grill, which were like one of the first people who to start doing shows again. So that's where we picked up like a show right away and we played there. I also started doing like places where there was like room. There's this like place called Social State House where there's, there was this comedy show every two weeks. And since all the clubs were still closed, I was like playing little acoustic sets before the comedian would hit the stage to open up for them every second week. So I was trying to grab what I can and now everything is slowly starting to open up again. And we're already like organizing shows for the Viper Room pretty soon, the Rainbow. And I think at the summer, we will finally do the whiskey, which is like one of my biggest dreams. The whiskey. Killer. That is awesome. You're talking all the venues that one of my biggest influences, Eddie Van Halen, played. So that is music to my ears. No pun intended. Boom. The whiskey. <laughs> oh, man. The whiskey. You gotta do the whiskey. I played the whiskey off for one track with one of my friends, Pistol Beauty. We did it. We did this cover of born to lose that was awesome like that was a, an amazing feeling as i mentioned to you prior to the interview you were brought to my attention by josh randy of mob music we've interviewed many artists associated with mob from vintage to sick life to baby ghost how did your association with Josh start out? Back in the early days when I just moved to LA and I was just like starting to get this band together, I like hung out at the sunset like a lot. And I'm like basically at the rainbow all the fucking time. Like if anybody wants to come meet up, you're probably going to find me at the rainbow. One of the girls working there was Erica and I became pretty good friends with Erica. This is Erica Solitaire how... we're talking about? Exactly. She oh, I love Erica. She's great. 
had her on the yeah, show Erica's too. Yeah, Erica's awesome. Josh was just like starting to get like more bands together to get associated with Mob and stuff, and he basically asked Erica like who her favorite bands are, and Erica showed him Hollywood Apocalypse, and he was just like that shit's fire, and then we like hooked up. I was still in Germany. She offered me that deal with Symphonic, and I was like, fuck, this is awesome. Like I can like put my own songs out, put my own music out, and for like the first time ever in my life that I had so much control over my own publishing and that was just like an awesome experience and so when I came back to Hollywood we just like met up a couple of times and talked like music and stuff and things just kept flowing and connecting and now we're all we're recording an album together it's just fucking awesome <laughs> does Hollywood Apocalypse currently have like a solidified lineup at the moment or is it more of your project where bandmates are kind of interchangeable that's a good question. <laughs> I'm actually at the, po- <laughs> at the position that like I had like these two guys who I've been playing like ever since I started doing shows. The bass player just kind of keeps switching. We, we don't have a tight bass yet, but we're recording the new record like with other people. And I'm thinking like that that might be the new band now. So I am not sure. The thing that I'm feeling the most now is like this little super group we got going on with Josh and with Crazy Towns, Rotten Rollin', who's also like drums on this new record. So I have no idea who even the lineup of the next show is going to be, but (laughs) we'll figure it out. I would not say that the, the people are interchangeable. It's just a lot of people who can be called Hollywood Apocalypse. Let's see. Two drummers who have the right to be called Hollywood Apocalypse. One bass player and he's in Germany and three guitarists I wouldn't say it's interchangeable people but it like depends on who's available and who feels like doing a show and who's feeling what song more and what songs you're going to go for for that show like how the band will look like but like everybody brings their own piece to the table what I like about Hollywood Apocalypse's music is that it's direct without any pretension about it and the lo-fi punk attitude that comes with it It really comes off genuine. What would you consider your personal ethos or credo when it comes to songwriting? I think I don't fuck around. Like, I'm really always very authentic about everything I write. I know people who, like, write songs about some fake scenarios or just, like, use some lines they, like, heard here and there or just, like, are trying to sound cool without really saying anything at all. I am always, like, writing from a place that's, like, really personal to me, like, out of like real experiences and stuff. I've gotten into so much shit because of songs sometimes because I wrote about a relationship or something like that. Some truths that probably somebody wouldn't want to hear and stuff like that. I'm always like more than honest. I put myself on my, on my lyrics and it's it's just like... Um, Something that's like really important to me that is that the music is always like really direct and really like speaking from my soul. When you sing, like you really want to mean it. And I'm someone who really hates it when I'm listening to somebody play a song and it's like, God damn it. You know, you don't mean that shit. Why the fuck are you even singing it? <laughs> For me, that was that's like something that is like of utmost importance that is real and authentic. No, I, I appreciate that. There's definitely a difference between artists that are just going through motions and not standing behind what they're singing and ones that come across as genuine. I'm happy to say that with your music, I hear honesty and there's something pure and visceral about it and it comes off wonderful especially with the pop sensibilities that you provide with your music so i would say whatever you're doing keep it up because it's working thanks man that's really good to hear especially in times when we can't really play that much live like good feedback is always good (laughs) definitely and i need to compliment you especially on your gear now i'm a guitar player too so i'm a real gear freak but one thing i noticed about your performances especially the live videos that you post on youtube you get a great sound from budget instruments meanwhile you have people that are dropping over two g's on equipment that they have no idea what to do with it or even how to write a song let alone play when it comes to gear what is it you're mostly looking for 
Or do you think that any instrument is fine and it's really solely based on the talent of the person playing it? Well, I do prefer a good guitar. I don't think a one hundred dollar, two hundred dollar guitar does it. But like, well, I'm not try, talking like, the Squire Bullet. I mean, like, at least like get a Fender Strat. Those eight hundred bucks are totally worth it. A Gibson guitar is like actually my favorite thing. Like a good, good assless Paul is the shit. But what I like to do is. Uh, when I use my effects, my, my pedals, it's never let the effects like depend too much on the sound. Maybe get a little booster, maybe get a little overdrive going on. But the more I like how I see people sometimes with these boards, like with these 12 different sounds on it, and you actually just need three. And you can like really like just make it louder and silenter on your guitar and stuff. Just get those three little sounds and make those sound good. Because when you're, you start combining a lot of different shit, it's going to sound wacky <laughs> at some point. It's actually the minimalism that, that kind of, I think, makes that sound happen. Because it's really not a lot going on. I try to make the songs have the variety inside, inside of themselves. So they don't need like too many effects to make them sound like they do. So... Get yourself three sounds and make them sound good. <laughs> That's what I'd say. That's a really good synopsis. I mean, like, if I think about it, I'm like, there's only three pedals that I really use. A uh, wah and an overdrive. And I use this um, uh, pedal called the pitch box, where it actually gives you, like, a nice coarse C octave type tone. So it's really oh, good nice. for, like, rhythm guitars. So. And of all the places I found it, I found it at a at a Walmart. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. I know, yeah, I know, but they don't make it anymore. And I found it. I'm like, I have to get it. And I, ever since I got it, I haven't taken it out of my rig. But no, I, I, I agree. Walmart full of surprises. Always. Yeah, but but the rule of three, I agree with you. That's uh, definitely a good. It, it, it's minimal but less is more in that sense, especially when it comes to pedals and effects. I totally agree with you on that. One thing I want to say though to you is that I love that you promote your music with not just your live videos, but also lyric videos. Who's usually producing the lyric videos and what made you decide to go this route as opposed to like doing a narrative to a song uh well i like uh, it really always enjoyed like when my favorite bands put out like lyric videos and just because I i'm a big fan of lyrics generally and um it's when you're the thing is making a big ass music video is always takes a lot of time and takes a lot of money and when you're putting a lot on, out a lot of music, you can't, don't can't really like make a video for each and every song that you're putting out. So I'm what I'm trying to do is like make a video, make a lyric video for almost every single single we put out. So there's some visual aspect going on with the music, and you can also always like hear the lyrics because the lyrics are always very dear to my heart. And uh, I have like these two guys. This is actually hilarious. They're on Fiverr. I find found them on Fiverr, and they're like they're not even that expensive. All every single one of these lyric videos will cost like max 80 90 dollars <laughs> so like and this guy is like on fire he one of them like the one i'm working with now the most who did the dreaming of you video and the, also the green tea and under recreational drugs video uh he's called animax and like you just like tell him like approximately what you want throw in 80 bucks, wait five days, and you get this motherfucking masterpiece of a lyric video. Like, he's really, I can, I can totally recommend that guy. We'll plug him in the description below, along with uh, all your links and stuff. What avenues are you looking towards in the future to promote your music? I only ask because I can hear your songs in like an independent film, like whether it's a comedy or a, even an independent romantic comedy or an, even an, an indie drama or even a web series. Like I could hear these songs as like great background to like a scene going on. Basically, what is the, what are your future plans for Hollywood Apocalypse or even you in general? I mean, hey, you have a new like, album that you're recording right now, which you're in the studio. So I'm definitely excited to hear that. Oh, we're putting out a single. It's called Lobotomy. And I did that with my girl, Sam, when they visited me here in LA. You know I think we're 
connected My finger in your eye Looking pretty, looking better With me by your side Now open wide and smile Look at the camera and say hi mom it was funny. We wrote this song, honestly, on the way from Hollywood to Thousand Oaks in Josh's car in 15, 15 20 minutes. We had those lyrics set, went in there and, and just like killed it. Like, same cat's incredibly talented. And I'm so glad, like, the first collaboration that I did with anyone with Hollywood Apocalypse is with this wonderful person who was like a really, really close friend of mine and more. And like, um, and we, it's a really fun song. Like you're gonna, it's it's a total blast. And what else we're doing, except for other than this record that we're doing now, I I am also a filmmaker. Like I've produced two movies. One is called Blind, and the other one's called Pretty Boy. They're the same franchise. It's basically about this masked dude who basically has this Ken mask who is like stalking this blind actress and she never sees him when he's there. He like sneaks into her house and just like does whatever he feel like he feels like. And that's what I've been doing. So now I'm going to direct my first film this year. It's called apnea. It's about a girl who ends up in a mental institution because her girlfriend died. And she thinks there's this monster following that wants to kill her. But we don't know if there's really a monster wanting to kill her or not. That's for the audience to figure out. So that's also what I'm working on. So there's a lot of shit coming at at everybody. Like I'm putting a lot of stuff out, like both music and in movies. And uh, there's also two films I'm going to throw some songs out as soundtrack things. So, like, there's a lot coming, definitely. All right. I'm really happy to hear that. Let's see. Pop music and psychological horror. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah. If people want to find out more about Hollywood Apocalypse or Princess Ivan, where on the Internet can they find you? Oh, well, the best thing to do is to, like, to check out my Insta. That's where I, like, post most of, like, the news and my other stuff that's going on. I used to do a lot of YouTube, so, but I want to get back to that. I just don't have the time where there's some movie reviews. So my Insta page is called The Movie Void, like, T-H-E-M-O-V-I-E-V-O-I-D. You can find me there very easily. And basically in all other social media, as I go by that name, Ivan, I really can't thank you enough for joining me on the podcast tonight. I know you're busy. I know you're recording the new album with Josh and I I'm really excited to hear it in the future. I'll let you get back to what you're doing. I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by the music is live podcast. I really want to thank you for having me. No problem. I really want to wish you all the best with your music and with your film career. And I'm looking forward to what you're putting out. Thank you so much, man. To find out more about the Music is Live podcast, check us out over at musicislivepodcast.com. Also, don't forget to check out the parent network, Radsai Review, over at radsireview.com. Hollywood Apocalypse, Princess Ivan, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Thank you. Bye, and everyone. <laughs> and remember, all art is valid. Cheers. Cheers. Music is Live podcast. This is your host, Lou Mavs. Check out everything you need to know. Oh, fuck. Eh, sorry, tongue twister. <laughs> All good. That's an outtake.